All right, what's going on, everybody? Sam from Southern Movie Bet. This video will be doing my UFC card predictions for UFC Fight Night 210, San Hager versus Song Yadong. As always, let's go through the entire list of picks and bets, then on to the breakdowns. At the ending, I'll show you guys the Patreon. First of all, shout out to the patrons that are still supporting the channel. You guys make it possible to keep this running. Obviously, I'm always welcoming more patrons, so consider supporting the channel if you like it. All right. So let's get on to this card. I think it's a quite an interesting card to bet. Right. Some of these bets I took them in early markets, other are more recent. So I'm gonna keep and leave a mix here because. To the patrons I told who I was betting at which line, so I'm keeping this in respect to them, but I'm gonna comment the movement of the lines, right? Also, this is after the waiting, so I have a little bit more insight there too. So between Maria Agapova and Dylan Robertson, I'm picking Agapova but not betting. Turner Bowser and, and Rodrigo Nascimento, I'm picking Bowser. And uh, I bet Nascimento at plus 185, now he's like plus 155, I think it's tricky at those lines. Bowser is looking better in the weightings. I would pass at these lines, but like I told you guys, it took no cement in an early market. Let's see what's gonna happen. I'm gonna tell you my breakdown soon. Javid Basharat and Tony Gravely. Interesting one, I'm picking Basharat, but passing. Greg Rodriguez and Chidian Jokwani. I'm picking Rodriguez, not betting him in the money line. Gonna be betting him on the on some prop. Giga Chikaze Sudiki Yusuf has been cancelled. Trevin Giles and Louis Kosi. I'm picking Giles, but I'm going to be betting Kosi. This is new to the patrons too. 0 0.75. Pat Sabatini and Demo Jackson. I'm picking Sabatini, but betting Jackson. Again, I took this in an early market. 2.0.75. Uh, At the current lines, guys, oh, another one that is tricky. Sabatini, I was sure that he would look stronger, but man, the, the size of the guy that uh, thick chest and he's so broad right i think he so looks so much more physical than demo jackson i think the best is here to pass but you know i'm keeping this one nicholas mott and cameron van camp guys this is the bet of the card this is my median quality bet on van camp i'm putting 2.15 here when i opened this line right i did like van camp in the ratings now he's a two he's like plus 150 now definitely a bet on him right I mean, uh, I could easily increase this to 2.5. I'm actually betting more money than this in my end. I'm just keep keeping this here, like I told you guys, because when I put first put this out, that was what I had. So in respect to the patrons, but guys, this is the fight to bet, in my opinion. Bet on Ben Camp. I'm going to break this down soon. Loma Lukbumi and Denise Gomez. This is also a new one. I like Lukbumi to win here, one unit on her. Song Yadong and Corey Sanhagen. The pick, the pick is the Sandman. But I got uh, Yadong in an early market, plus 170. There's maybe a little value on Song Yadong, but I like a little bit more the prop on him. By decision, I'm going to be commenting that. So let's get on to this one, guys. I'm going to try to make this quite short because uh, I'm quite tired, to be honest. But let's see what, how we can get this one going for you guys. So between Trevin Giles and Luis Cosi. So, guys, this is a tricky one, but the reason is Kosi, not that experienced, and uh, he used it to finish fight everybody in the first round, and he almost finished Palatnikov the first round, and he guessed, and then he lost in the ending. If that happens the same here, Giles is a tough guy. Giles could finish him. It's tricky to, to see Giles here, too, because he's the second fight as a welterweight. He fought Michael Morales, the first one. Morales is a big guy for for well, welterweight and he was so young, right? 23, he is something. So I think Giles is yet to perform at his best in the welterweight, probably gonna be this matchup. But Luis Cosi, this guy's him and his brother, they're not in the best camp, right? But they somehow they fight smart. They have like a high fight IQ, they fight like they didn't. They don't fight like veterans yet because I, I think they still have to prove themselves a little bit, right? Because they use it to be a fast finisher. And what's gonna happen now that they're in the UFC and can finish guys? So, but I think Kosi gonna gonna do similar to what his brother did and be smarter here. I'm picking Giles within distance. I think it's the safest pick in terms of a bet. I'm gonna be betting Kosi here, right? I think he has some chances for the finish. So it makes sense to bet him because he can finish. And I also think he has very good chances for a decision. 
like I said to you guys, I think he's gonna fight smart. He's probably gonna try to be find some power shots on Giles, but not gonna get himself out. I think he's gonna try to wrestle Giles a little bit. He's a decent wrestler, decent grappler. He's better than Giles. Giles, he's a complete guy in the sense that he can fight anywhere. Not excellent, not that technical on the ground, but he can fight and he's tough and he, he's confident. He's big for the division. So I think the line's a little bit off here. So it makes sense to bet Kosi at plus 185, in my opinion. And I'm going to be betting Kosi by decision too. Lamaluk Bumi and Denise Gomez. So this is actually, if you guys like, some of you guys like to, to the lock of the night type of things, definitely it's Loma. Because, not definitely, the problem that I have here, I was not able to find Denise's last fight in the Contender Series. I, I, I couldn't find, uh, watch that. So to me, it's tricky. But what I've seen from Denise Gomez, I'm definitely not impressed. Like a brawler trying to move forward, but without much technique. She's fighting a much more technical fighter here, Loma, on the feet. Nobody can match her on the pure, not, not nobody, right? But she's excellent on the feet. She's also young, she's not 25, 26, I forgot to update this. But I do have her as a strong favorite. I actually think that she has a very good chance to finish Gomez. I'm putting some money on Loma by knockout on the round two and the round three. Those lines are incredibly juicy, right? So. If you want to hear more on those props, it's part of the Patreon, okay? Tanner Bowser and Rodrigo Nascimento. Like I told you guys, I bet Nascimento in an early market. Bowser, the thing is here, he's faster. He's um, more athletic, right? But he has a hole in his game. It's from it's his grappling. Nascimento is not bad in, in the striking. I think he can hang with most of the guys. He can hang technically a little bit with Bowser. But the thing is that he fights tall. Rodrigo does... Fights tall, not the fastest reflexes, not the fastest guy. Actually, he's not slow, but I think Bowser is a fast heavyweight, so it's tough to deal with that. So you can definitely see Bowser, you know, finding angles, fighting his clean shots. We'll see if Nascimento actually going to push the pace, find a big right hand, hurt Bowser, and make this fight interesting. It's tricky to bet, right? I took Rodrigo in an early market. If you would ask me to bet nowadays, I would probably just pass. I think to bet Bowser at such a strong line is complicated. To bet Nascimento now at plus 155, plus 140 probably he is now. It doesn't make sense too. So if you would ask me now, I would pass. But as I told you guys, I got Rodrigo in an early market. Let's see what happens here. Pat Sabatini and Damon Jackson. High level fight, but at least high level grappling match. None of these guys are excellent on the feet. I saw some people commenting Sabatini being technical. I don't know, guys. I haven't seen much. Probably I was not not with much patience to watch the entire those entire fights that Sabatini had. But I was not impressed. If you're gonna ask me, striking could go either way because I think Damon he's he definitely not technical on the feet. Comes in square, pushes hard the pace, doesn't move the head or anything like that. But he. I mean, he can push the pace, right? I don't think Sabatini has enough experience on the feet either. So to me, on the, on the striking, it's pretty even. You can make an argument for Sabatini because he's probably the more athletic, more powerful of the two, but not because of technique, in my opinion. So then on comes on the ground. I think Sabatini has an edge with the wrestling, but Damon Jackson on the, on the ground, this guy will keep scrambling, will keep fighting. This guy, he's tough, right? Damon Jackson. But there is a, the side advantage for Sabatini. One more of those fights that I took an early bet on Damon. But now seeing the waiting, Sabatini looks so much stronger. I would pass, right? But uh, let's see what's going to happen. I took an early bet on, on Jackson at plus 170. And, uh, but nowadays, I think it's, it's a pass for me. I think basically the lines are correct now. I have I had Jackson here as not a, such a strong dog, but it's tricky because again the physical part. Jackson is now at 34, so there's that too. He has been KO'd before. Sabatini much fresher, the better wrestler, much more physical. So probably the lines are closer to that, are more correct than what I had here initially. So yeah, I think uh, yeah Sabatini is the pick, and I would pass at this point, but. I got an early bet on Jackson there. Nicholas Mott and Cameron Van Kemp. Like I told you guys, this is the fight to bet in my opinion. I think Van Kemp is going to win this unless he got knocked out in the first round. Mota has power, especially on the first. 
Cameron Van Camp, he tends to get hit and um, he doesn't move much the head, so he can definitely be knocked out, but that's pretty much the chances that I give for Mota. I'm being quite uh, uh, you know, generous to Mota here in these odds. I don't know, maybe just because Cameron, he gets hit pretty easily and he's coming down to lightweight and he's not in a decent camp. Mota is in a much better camp, packs power, so I'm giving him respect in that regard, but I don't know, guys. To me, Cameron Van Camp should be the favorite on this one. At least minus 130, I would give him myself like minus 150 easily to Cameron Van Camp. I think he's gonna basically eat some shots from Mota. I hope he doesn't get knocked out. If he doesn't, from the second, actually from the first, from the get go, he's gonna get to Mota's face. I think that actually, this went by on talking, right? That's the, one of the other reasons why I was not putting Van Camp as such a strong favorite, at least initially, because you don't know what the man gonna do, actually. He was trying to be technical against Andre Fialio, didn't work for him, but he was not do doing bad, but I don't know what he's gonna do here, that's basically the idea, right? But anyway, I think this guy, if he pushes the pace, he can easily, not easily, but can definitely finish Mota on the second or on the third, and if he controls the range, he can. He definitely has the lens. Mota is not a volume puncher, he's a power puncher, counter striker, but doesn't have the range. So to me, this is Cameron fight to win, guys. The bet definitely on him, and even if he gets knocked out and I lose my money, I don't care, because uh, there is a massive value to him, without a doubt. Javid Basharad and Tony Gravely. Guys, to be honest, I was fine. I was I looking for Basharat, I ended up watching his brother, I think more than him, then after, and I saw Contender Sisa come on, I saw this Basharat guy on the card, what happened? So it's Javid and Fa Farid, I think, to Basharat. Both excellent, I think, actually, Farid, his brother, who just fought in the Contender Series, I think he's a little bit better. Javid is more like a kickboxer, I think. But um, anyway, guys, I'm confused here. Since I made up this confusion, maybe the value is on Gravely, maybe I should bet Gravely here. The man is tough, he pushes the page, excellent wrestler, Gravely. Right, so it makes sense to bet Gravely, probably, I'm gonna maybe even just a little bit for fun, but Gravely, but I don't know, Basharat seems to be technical, he seems to be good everywhere. He seems to be legit takedown defense, good grappling, fast on the feet, super young, not, not super young, but very young. So maybe Javid, like I'm putting here, minus 130, gravely plus 125, probably would be the more a line that would be more fair to Tony. So the bet definitely on Tony. If you're betting this, no way to bet Javid in his debut and everything against a high-level guy like Tony. So maybe bet on Tony. Maybe I'm gonna be doing that. Maria Gapov and Gillian Robertson, an interesting one here. Robertson. Sort of a pure BJJ player in there. She uses. She came up a little bit with the hands. She doesn't have that bad uh, boxing, but she's quite short. You know, she's not a big or very strong flyweight by any means. Agapova, she's much taller. She has those super long limbs. The problem Agapova, she's still she's yet to find her effective style. Doesn't have uh, much structure to her game. One fight she goes well, the second she just messes up. Before she was also like blitzing and uh, coming like you know, juggernaut forward and she got finished by Shayna Dobson and then she basically changed her style. So let's see what's gonna happen here. I think she has more chances to be honest, Agapova. I have her as a, actually this is wrong here. I copied and forgot to change. So I think I have this as a 50-50. If Jillian takes the, to the ground, obviously she's gonna dominate. But I think it's gonna be tough to take Agapova down. I think she will be able to Keep the range, basically stuff the takedowns, or at least most of those. I don't think she gets finished, but obviously Robertson is a submission specialist. She can finish Agapova, but I think Agapova survives, maybe gonna get taken down one time or another, but she probably most of the time does more volume, controls the range, at least that's what she has to do. So I'm picking her in a 50-50, think she has more potential. Greg Rodriguez and Chidian Jokwani, high level fight here, guys. Greg Rodriguez, you're always, you know, thinking that he's gonna get knocked out, but he never, he still is yet to be knocked out in the UFC. He, the guy is powerful, he gets in, he's aggressive, he comes forward, he gets to guys' face, he throws bombs, he takes to the ground, so he's very dangerous, right? Excellent BJJ player, 
Exxon submission uh, game. And Jokwani, veteran of the, the game. I'm a fan of this guy. I've been following his career forever. So, I mean, another big guy for the division, super long, high-level Muay Thai fighter. Came up with his uh, takedown defense, with his grappling. The problem that, in my opinion, that Chidi has... Actually, interesting, I'm picking Chidi here. I was thinking that I was picking Rodriguez. So the problem that Chidi has, in my opinion, is the motivation. I think after he was too much concerned in, into weight cutting, the men fought as a welterweight, which is just ridiculous. You know, it's just insane. So I think if he fought for most of the time as a middleweight, he would be much better, in much better shape nowadays. But uh, nonetheless, the man is stuff. He's technical. He can do a little bit of everything. Obviously, he doesn't want to touch the ground with with Rodriguez. But uh, he's tough to submit, and he knows what he's doing there. So, guys, basically, pick your side. To be honest, I think uh, Chidi has this very good chance for the knockout. Probably pick knocked out for Chidi because I think he has more chances for a knockout. Whereas Rodriguez, between finish and decision, more or less the same to me. So I'm picking. Picking probably Chidi here or whatever, but uh, my bet's gonna be on Rodriguez by decision. Okay, more to that on the Patreon. This has been cancelled, and then in the main event, of course, and Hagen, Song, and Dong. High level fight here, guys. Corey, the Sandman, keeps bouncing around, super tough to hit, excellent everywhere. Maybe not excellent everywhere, but at least good level everywhere. On the striking, he shines. On the grappling, he's pretty good. Takedown defense, pretty good. Submission defense, pretty good. Plus, he's super tough. Song Yadong, the man, packs power, now incredibly young, still 24, has more experience than San Hagen, plus more fights, I think, right? And uh, can do a little bit of everything, right? But he's at his best and he's moving forward and throwing those bombs. He's also a decent wrestler, not too technical, but. He gets deep into those double legs and he explodes and he takes guys down. He can grapple, he can ground and pound. Son Hagen has a good uh, height advantage here and reach advantage, at least three inches, I think, in height and probably five in reach. He's tough to hit. So probably, not probably, the, the pick is Son Hagen by decision. But the value, in my opinion, is on Yadong by decision because Corey is tough to finish, he's tough to hit, so obviously... He's, he's a tough guy, he's tough to hit, so it's very difficult to fight, to finish San Hagen. Not that Yadong cannot, but it's difficult. But Yadong, he can make this interesting. He can be more aggressive, he can get into his face, he can try to out-wrestle, he can land a big shot here and there, right? So I don't see it's impossible that Yadong wins. Yadong could win even rob it, because he's probably going to be the one taking the center of the octagon. He may even need more shots, but he finds one or another per round. Judges could be swayed by that. So I wouldn't be surprised if you see some robbery here that San Hagen should win, but yet they gave to Yadong. So Yadong by decision, guys, plus, what, 400? I think definitely uh, left in the line, the way to go here. So guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, subscribe, share with your friends. So to the Patreon, as I told you guys. So you guys have in Patreon the access to this. As I told you guys, this was released early in, in, in either of the slides. All of the slides I have the summary here on what I'm doing, who I'm betting, if I'm betting. I'm releasing this early, so just to show you guys. I This was the one that I told you on, uh, I think I released this one, as this one. Right, so there's analysis, and uh, I said those guys that I was betting in the beginning, right? So here's the uh, early, early material. So also the props that I had, I was I talked about Diaz round three, round four, and round five. Round four was the bet, my biggest bet of the prop. I actually cashed five units on Diaz round four, right? So these are the how it looks like. In the Patreon, I, actually this one I gave the video explaining everything that I was doing. But uh, sometimes I put here, so I'm taking that prop. This is this is how confident I am in this prop. So for 10 bucks, you guys can support the channel, show your appreciation. And for 50 bucks, you guys have access to this, which is the entire strategy here, how much I'm betting. As soon as I am betting, there are more events here already. I have UFC Fight Night 211. I have UFC 280, that was another 
big bet that I'm going to have on FC280. So that's how it looks like. And innovation to you guys. I have also Fighters DB here, which is my take on on stats on fighters. I'm actually using this both to build my props now and to take my bets. So just let's just take some that uh, I filled out everything. So just you guys see how it looks like. So I'm basically classifying these guys in uh, how good they are in the offense with striking, with grappling, how the X factor factors with aggression, volume, how tough they are. It's numbers. It's my experience here. It's subjective. But anyway, I I pretty confident that these numbers make sense, or at least they make sense in comparison. And then at the ending, I'm rating these guys. So who's fighting? Is, is it the guys that are two guys that are fighting that are actually good rated? Like here, I have Chidi and Gregory basically the same rating for obviously different reasons. But to me, they are high level fighters. They are above eight, right? I have Gregory point one unit more, which is nothing. Right, so basically that's why I call the 50-50 fight, right? So this, are, this is how I'm coming up with that. And uh, by the way, look, Camera Van Camp and Nicholas Mott, I have Van Camp at 7.8, whereas I have Mota 7.3. So to me, the Cameron would be the favorite here and look at the line. So this is how the insights you can drive from here, plus see how I'm rating either of these guys. So this is actually, I think this is pretty good, but Obviously, it's my opinion. I'd like to know you guys' opinion too. So this is part of $50 Patreon. Plus, as always, feel free to ask me anything. Okay, so talk to you guys again next time. Thank you for watching and good luck with your bets.